here is person number four. He likes in, uh, he engages in simple activities. Engages in pious activities too. This is like a modern Indian actually. Uh, modern Hindu Indian, you can say. Uh, weird, this is. Uh, he may even have such desires. He may have such common desires. Uh, he will not engage. He's not interested in liberation or in making Krishna happy. Not as engaged in Jnana or Bhakti. Uh, person five. He uh, wants sense enjoyment, doesn't like pious activities, he wants uh, liberation, he wants uh, to make Krishna happy. Uh, he wants liberation, he wants to make Krishna happy, he will, he will avoid, avoid uh, uh, the regulated discipline life of Vedic culture, but he will accept sense enjoyment of the modern world. Uh, these kind of people I have seen, I have seen quite a few of these actually. Not very impressive. Uh, then here is another type of person wants different types of simple activities, but doesn't like pious activities. Uh, likes jnana, wants liberation, uh, but doesn't want to make Krishna happy. This is like an impersonalist, but a simple impersonalist. He's not a regular impersonalist. He's a crazy man actually. Uh, look at this person seven wants to make Krishna happy. But doesn't want liberation, doesn't want uh, to acquire uh, bias credits, doesn't want to engage in bias activities, but he will engage in simple activities. And he will say it's Kali Yuga Prada. Uh, then he has a pure, simple character uh, who engages in both types of simple activities. Person 8, person 9, he engages only in, in, in crude sense enjoyment. Uh, he doesn't even want them. Crude, crude. Uh, but at the same time, he'll talk about. Uh, Talk about uh, dharma, karma, moksha, jnana, Krishna priti, uh, making Krishna happy, Krishna bhakti, and so on. And this is another strange combination. Uh, here is person 10. Person 10 he engages in this type of simple activity, uh, group sense enjoyment, doesn't want refined, wealthy sense enjoyment. Uh, but he likes pious activities, uh, he likes even liberation. Uh, but he doesn't uh, want to make Krishna happy, doesn't engage in Krishna Bhakti. There are quite a few people like this in the modern world. And look at person 11, person 11, uh, crude sense enjoyment, uh, highest activities, no desire for liberation, but he wants uh, to make Krishna happy, he engages in Krishna consciousness, another strange combination. Uh, person 12, doesn't want uh, Krishna consciousness, doesn't want to make Krishna happy, doesn't even want liberation, doesn't want pious activities, and he engages in very crude, uh, simple activities, he engages in these activities, uh, sort of very, very crude, uh, Hinduish type of character. Person 13, simple activities, doesn't like, wealthy sense enjoyment, um, doesn't like to be pious, pious, uh, but he likes uh, jnana and moksha, and likes Krishna bhakti, he likes to make Krishna happy. This is another strange type of devotee. Uh, then you have 14, person 14 wants crude sense enjoyment, doesn't want any of this uh, wealthy sense enjoyment, doesn't want pious activities, he wants jnana and moksha, doesn't want Krishna consciousness. Here is another. Um, this person wants simple activities, karma, and he wants Krishna bhakti and uh, the Krishna's happiness, but doesn't want liberation. He says, "I'm beyond liberation. I don't want jnana. I don't want karma or uh, uh, just all this dharma stuff. Uh, I don't even want wealth." But uh, look at this. He wants the highest of the highest and the lowest of the lowest. Uh, this is one reason why in India, uh, people who are religious uh, often criticize us. Because they think that the entire movement is comprised of people uh, uh, in this combination. In this combination. Okay, then person 16 wants sense enjoyment and doesn't want anything else. In fact, crude sense enjoyment. Okay, person 17 doesn't want crude sense enjoyment, only wants wealthy sense enjoyment. And he wants everything else too. He also wants karma, he wants moksha, he wants Krishna Preeti, engages in bhakti, jnana, karma. Uh, but he also wants refined sense enjoyment. This is his problem. Uh, then you have person 18 uh, who wants uh, 
defines its enjoyment um, as karma. Um, he wants jnana but doesn't want bhakti. 19, person 19, this one he wants, he doesn't want fruits and sense enjoyment, wants wealthy sense enjoyment, he wants pious activities, he wants pious credits, doesn't want to attain liberation but he wants the devotional service to make Krishna happy. Uh, very strange, very, very strange. Then you have uh, person category 20. You want, actually, I've seen quite a few of these kind of people. That's why I'm taking this trouble to show you all these various combinations uh, just so that you become familiar very, very thoroughly with this so that you clearly understand what is the type of, what is the combination of activities that Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, Chaitanya, Chaitanya, allow. Till now, none of these combinations are, are prescribed or recommended because they're all strange. They're all strange. Look at this one. Um, mm, wants wealthy sense enjoyment, but um, wants simple activities. Then look at this. He wants karma in order to attain pious credits. And doesn't want jnana, doesn't want bhakti, doesn't want liberation, doesn't want to make Krishna happy. And look at this. 21. He wants to make Krishna happy. He engages in Krishna consciousness. He even engages in uh, activities of Vedic study, jnana. Wants liberation, but he doesn't want uh, dharma. Uh, he doesn't want to engage in karma. But uh, high class, simple activities that he wants. Uh, refined sense enjoyment. He wants that. Doesn't want crude sense enjoyment. Uh, again, another bad combination. Person 22. Uh, he does not want uh, crude sense enjoyment, but he does want refined sense enjoyment. Uh, simple, of course. Doesn't want pious activities, does want jnana and moksha, engages in jnana, wants moksha, does not engage in Krishna consciousness. And look at this, um, person 23, uh, he wants to engage in Krishna consciousness, wants to make Krishna happy, doesn't want uh, to study the scriptures and analyze them, doesn't want liberation, uh, doesn't want uh, all these pious activities and dharma, he thinks it's transcendental, but he engages in refined sinful activities of the modern world uh, under the critics of Kali Yuga, travel, uh, but he avoids crude sense enjoyment. Then person 24, he avoids crude sense enjoyment, wants to find sense enjoyment and he wants nothing else. Uh, there are several people who come under this category, in fact millions of people come under this category I would think. Uh, they are persons of the 24th type and then look at this. Person of uh, 25. This person he avoids crude sense enjoyment, crude sinful activities. He avoids uh, wealthy, refined sinful activities, sense enjoyment. He accepts karma, he wants pious credit, he wants, uh, he engages in jnana, wants uh, moksha. And he wants to make Krishna happy, engages in Krishna consciousness. This person can be accepted. He's third class. Then look at this person 26. He's similar to this person of 25, just that he doesn't engage in Krishna consciousness, and therefore, that is another strange combination. Scriptures reject anyone who gives up the activities of, of a devotion service to the Supreme Lord. Even if he is engaging in pious activities, even if he wants liberation, if he does, even if he gives up sinful life, but if he does not engage daily in the duties of devotion service to the Supreme Personality of God, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, Smaranam Padasevanam, Archanam Vandanam Dakyam, Sakhyam Atman Ivedanam, the nine types of devotion service, he is said to be an animal, he is going to hell. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu declares it. So this person is not very comfortable, not very great, but person 27. Is accepted as a fourth class person. This is a fourth class candidate. Uh, this we saw person 25 is third class and this is fourth class. He avoids the uh, sinful activities, he avoids all activities prohibited in the Vedas, accepts only karma uh, and bhakti. He desires uh, pious credits. Uh, he accepts artha in. in that is in line with dharma, he accepts karma only in line with artha and dharma. And he accepts bhakti. Sometimes he does it, 
And sometimes he does this. He accepts karma. When he is lying with jnana, and bhakti, he accepts jnana in line with bhakti. He wants Krishna's satisfaction. And he can accept other things which are in line with this. And this person can be accepted. Then, in the person 28, he is like person 27, just that he avoids some of activities, but he engages in the five activities of karma. And you, you might think this is a karmi that uh, is acceptable to uh, the Vedic Acharyas, but no, it is not. Uh, in fact, a karmi is a person uh, under the combination 27. This person 27, uh, if he spends more time in here and less time here, in other words, he gives more time for these activities, the activities of karma, and he gives less time for the activities of bhakti, and he has a greater desire for this and a lesser desire for this, then that person is actually a karmi. Strictly speaking, that person is a karmi. And um, look at this person 29. No simple activity. No karma even. He only wants jnana and bhakti. So this person, he wants jnana and bhakti. He wants moksha and Krishna Preeti. This is a second class person. I'm talking about this combination. This combination is second class. This combination is second class. Uh, if uh, you, ha you have a person uh, who is more interested in jnana activities, less interested in bhakti activities, more interested in attaining moksha and less interested in making Krishna happy. That person is described as a jnani. This is the jnani that is uh, spoken of in the scriptures. This is the right type of jnani that is spoken of in the scriptures. Uh, it means exactly this. He accepts this set of activities, he has this set of desires, he has this set of activities, he has this set of desires, and does not engage in this activity, does not have these desires, does not engage in these activities, does not have these desires. And then person 30, um, he only wants to, only engages in jnana to attain moksha, does not engage in bhakti to make Krishna happy, and avoids these activities and desires, and these activities these desires, he goes nowhere. He goes nowhere actually. He doesn't even get Brahman realization. No, nothing he gets uh, because he's an offender. Anyone who does not engage daily in the activities of Krishna consciousness is actually an offender. Yesham Purusham Sakshad Bhagavadishwaram Navajanti Avajananti Sthana Drashta Patanti Asaha, is described in the 11th canto. He's an offender, just like you. You may be a good man, you may be helping your neighbor, you may be mowing their lawn, you may do so many things, but if you don't pay your income taxes, you are a tax evader, then you are put in jail, you are penalized. And similarly, engaging in the activities of bhakti and desiring Krishna's pleasure is compulsory for everyone. You can never avoid that uh, if you want even to be materially happy. When you come to person 31, this is a pure devotee that I've already described. A pure devotee simply engages in the activities of bhakti, etc. Only wants to make Krishna happy and everything else is subordinate to that. This person can be accepted as a pure devotee. He does not engage in this activity, he does not desire this. As he has no desire for, he does not have two desires. That is a person 29. Person 29, he both wants to get out of material existence and he wants to make the Lord happy, which is only possible if you want to go back to Godhead. But, uh, and he does not uh, have a desire to have pious credits to enjoy life uh, in this lifetime or next lifetime, nor does he desire simple activities or enjoyment through simple activities. But nevertheless, he has two desires, two sets of activities. But this person has only one set of desires and activities. This person is described by Lord Chaitanya as a pure devotee. This pure devotional service is first class. Person 29 is second class. Person 25 is third class. Person 24 is fourth class. So, fourth class. You can begin with fourth class, become third class, and then become second class, and then become first class.